Did I upload it already? Yeah. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. We good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burn Down. Today's episode, all we got to say is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not here on The Burn. I'm about to tell you <laughs> everything coming up next on The Burn Down. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Burn Down Podcast. I am Justin, aka the Dapper Cigar, and this gentleman over here. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. It's Eric, aka Brother Cigar. If you're new to this channel, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and please hit the bell to be notified for every single time we drop a new episode. Check out the website, burndownpodcast.com. It's $5 a month to become a member. You get exclusive access to discounts to five partnering stores. That's Nova Cigars, Revive Vinyl, Kansas Clean and Still Whiskey, Cigarandpipes.com, and Unicorn Hunters Club. You also get into it. It's a monthly members-only giveaway where we give away cigars, spirits, accessories, and more. Burnoutpodcast.com. I just roll with it. Eric, don't even – I don't even need – do you even need me for this conversation? Jeez. <laughs> I mean, holy hell. A lot of brothers speak, will you? I know. I just – I sometimes it just flows. I just nah, run yeah, with it. Sometimes it just flows off the tongue. So welcome back. For those who are listening and watching, Justin just came back from Vegas. Haven't talked to him in a few days. It's kind of weird. So we're here to catch up. He's got a bunch of stories, apparently, and uh, some good ones and some funny ones. I hope they're funny. They better be funny or else. Yeah, I got a, cu- I got a, I got a couple out. that are. I got one in particular that comes to mind that I, it's just. Ugh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, I, I, that's literally what I said when, when this, this happened. I just. What? I okay. felt like Russell Westbrook. What? 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 <laughs> it was so. Anyway, um, let's uh, light up what we're smoking. Actually, Eric, why don't you tell them? Because this is one of our partners. If hey, you're a member on hey. the website, you get access to a discount to this uh, company right here. It is shout out to our girl Leo at NovaCigar.com. We just happened to be smoking both of these. I pulled out a Nova, and he goes, "Hey, that's funny. I'm smoking a Nova too." Not, not planned. Not planned at all. But, uh, yeah, I got the Nova Platinum Batch, and Justin over there has got Leo's new blend, the Nova Leo 11. It used to be the Leo X, which was her exclusive line. Now it's the Leo 11, which is yeah. – I, I haven't tried that one yet. Neither have I. It looks really good. Yeah. I like the shape of it. I like the little pigtail on top. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. And then we got some Woodford here. That's bottle kill. Bottle kill alert. I brought it over. I This is actually – the selection date was from back – in 2018, believe it or not. Really? It's actually the day after my birthday. 7-14-2018. And uh, I was actually given this by Villager Cigars years ago. So, almost about finished. So, I said, you know what? It's been marinating enough. Let's just uh, pour it up and finish it here on the burn down. So, while you light up your cigar. That's, I mean, this has been a few years. No, it still smells good. Because sometimes they say, like, once you open up your, your bourbon or your whiskey... The air gets into it, and then it kind of really. I, I don't know. That's what that's what the bourbon guys say on TikTok and stuff like that. So but I cut the cigar, and part of the freaking thing came off. Well, well, I also back, travel with this. backstory. Your, your cigars took a little bit of a beating. Yeah, because I I travel with this. That's one thing that's that is tough is when you travel with cigars, especially if like they're in your lug. I carry mine. I carry them on to every every flight because I don't want them. They already get tossed around when you carry them on because you got to put them through the. Through the X-ray, then you got to put them underneath your seat, and then you pick them up under your seat. You got to put them through the X-ray, so they kind of they you put them in the back of the car, they move around, right? Uh, so this one kind of got I don't want to say beat up, but it got I, beat up. I think the head cracked a little bit, so when I cut it, it came off. But it's still gonna that's smoke. A damn, that's a damn shame. It's still gonna smoke just fine. So it's a damn shame. Now I don't know. I don't think this is it. I don't. Because Leo, some of her, one of her lines has like a an infused almost. I don't know if it's this one. I don't think it's this one. I hope not. I'm not a big fan, even though they're good. I'm not a big fan of uh, the platinum batches. So, okay. really? No, no. I'm sorry. Not not the platinum batches. That's the cigar. I'm not a fan of the infused cigars. Oh, I that's was gonna what I'm saying. Because like my dad, he likes one of the. He likes all of Leo's or Nova cigars. And he yeah, really, your dad's a big advocate. He's like a freaking well, he, brand ambassador. He's he, he's a he's a loyal BDP member, and he uses that discount to the fullest. Good, um, good, good. 
but one of her lines has um it's like a flavor and flavor infused i forgot which one i don't i'm not sure if it's a platinum batch but okay no i don't think so anyways so welcome back justin you're home from vegas i am you, home you made from, it back from las vegas yeah so uh i went to vegas uh over the past weekend uh, when this comes out uh, the weekend was the first weekend of March Madness. So 17 to the 21st. And it's the first weekend of March Madness. So they have 40, 48 games, I think. Jeez. So yeah, it's the first ra- it's a first and second round. So uh, March 17th and 18th, which is Thursday, Friday, is the f- whole first whole first round. So it's 64 teams, so it's 32 games. The whole first round. And then Saturday and Sunday, it's 32 teams, so there's 16 games. They play the whole second round. So right now, it brings you into the Sweet 16. And there's only 16 teams left. So it's 48 games in an entire weekend. So you're just like, oh. it's, yeah, it's just game after game after game after game. Before you get and, into it. Yeah, cheers. Cheers not to coming back with herpes. That stays, <laughs> that stays with you. Yeah, so I went to Vegas. It was a. Uh, That's the infamous line from The Hangover. Yeah, I know. For people who don't know. Except for herpes. That shit will come back with you. <laughs> and it was the whole first round. Basically, just, you know, gamble, watch a bunch of games, big sports bettors. We like to gamble. We play craps, blackjack, right? So, gambling, watching the games, betting on the games, eating, drinking beer. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Man, so, shit. <laughs> yeah, golfing. We golf <laughs> one day. So, oh, oh, oh. And I'm just trying to chill. I'm just trying to <laughs> uh, Yeah, so it was real, you know, man shit. Just, just hanging out, smoking cigars, right? I smoke, you know, smoking a sports book. So have your lunch after lunch, have a cigar, watch the games, go to dinner after dinner, have a cigar and, nice. and a cocktail. So it was good stuff. But funny story that happened in Vegas. One of. So it was Friday night, right? Yeah, this is hopefully this stays together. Um you beat up my girl Leo, son. That's disrespect. You beat her up. I'm going to call the police on you. But so it's still smoking fine. Um, so it was it was uh, sa- it was Saturday Saturday night. Yeah, it was Saturday night. <clears throat> Just got back from dinner, and I'm like, you know what? I have a cigar. So there's a, a bar in Cosmo. We were staying in the Aria, but we walked over to Cosmo. We had buddies that stayed in the Cosmo. So there's a bar called the Chandelier Bar, and I might have told you about this. I don't know. Well, are these hotels like yeah, so, important? Oh, sorry. So these are hotels. So there's yeah. the Aria, the Cosmopolitan. They're, they're kind of right next to- I've never been to Vegas, so I don't know shit about Vegas. Okay. So you have the big strip of Vegas, okay? And right at the, right at the base of the strip is the, the Vegas sign, Welcome to Vegas, right? And then as you're going down the strip, there's casinos left and right. Okay, there's like the Luxor, which is the big pyramid one. There's New York, New York, the MGM. And then you get to what they call City Center, which is like Planet Hollywood, the Bellagio Fountains, the Cosmopolitan, the Aria. There's a couple big ones. Okay, and then you fur- all the way at the end is the Stratosphere and where they have the old Vegas, like Fremont Street, where you have like dollar craps and where like the Golden Nugget is. Where So, Ooh. where a Vegas originated, right? All The old Vegas. So anyway, so we're at uh, we stay at the Aria, but we spent a lot of time in the Cosmo because we had friends that were staying there too. They had a good sports book. It wasn't too far of a walk. So after oh, what's dinner, a sports book? What's a good sports? What does that mean? Sports book is like uh, where all they have where you can place all the bets for sporting. Oh, like it, the sports book is in the Cosmo Tower. Yeah. So yeah. certain casinos will have sports books. Some of them don't, uh, but most of them do where now. You can place bets. Like- where you can place bets, and they have a million TVs. Got it, right. Got it. Got it. So. We went to the Cosmo, and there's a bar called the Chandelier Bar, which I might have told you about. It's this giant chandelier that spans like three levels, and they have – inside the chandelier, they have a bar, and they have different tables. So usually, we go to the hostess stand, which is on like the second or third level, and we say, hey, can we you know get a table? I just want to have a cocktail, have a waitress come over, and I like to smoke a cigar. She says, oh, you can't, uh, you can't smoke here anymore. I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, you can't smoke here. Hey, like uh-huh. – you can smoke in the whole fucking casino. I can't smoke here. She's like, oh, they changed the rule, whatever. You can smoke on the bottom floor. I'm like, but smoke rises, so like, whatever. Okay, fine. We'll go to the bottom floor. So Another dumb rule. So we go to the bottom floor. It wasn't her fault. She's just the messenger. Yeah. But so we go to the bottom floor. We get a table, right? And sitting down, 
light up my getting my cigar out, have the lady come over. I'll take a Manhattan. Thank you very much. He'll take a beer. Whatever. On the up. So I'm lighting my cigar, right? So this is where the story comes in. So I'm lighting my cigar. And, you know, I'm toasting the foot. Okay? So I'm just getting warmed up. This guy comes over, drunk, off his ass, wearing a pink sweatshirt. Okay? Oh, like right. Probably a freaking unicorn or whatever on the sweatshirt. But I'm lighting the cigar. I'm toasting it. And he goes, are you lighting that for your, for your buddy? I said, no, I'm lighting it for me. And he was, like, taken back. He's like, what? <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, can I watch you light that cigar? I'm like, what? He goes, can I just, he's like, I know, it's weird. Can I just watch you light it? I said, I guess, sure. Huh? So he just took, like, he took, just stood there. And I proceeded to finish toasting it, put it in my mouth, finished toasting it, started lighting it, started smoking it. And he's like, I said, and that's how you light a cigar? He goes, wow, okay. I'm like, do you want one? He says, no, 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 no. Can I help you with anything else? He's like, no, I just, I wanted to. He's fantasizing about dude, it. Dude, I'm like, what the fuck, He's dude? fantasizing you about putting your cigar in your I'm mouth. I'm like, what the heck, right? about all the so, so listen, now it gets better. So I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? So you just guy, gave a guy a fantasy. So I'm like, what the hell? So then he like, hammered off his knees, asked the game, money, whatever, whatever. Turns out, okay, nice guy, whatever. So um, he goes away, and he comes back like five, ten minutes later. I'm still smoking a cigar. I was, I was smoking a, I was actually smoking an Opus X um, Destino Al Siglo. Nice. Yeah, I was like, I'm in Vegas, gotta smoke a good one. Hell yeah. So he comes back and uh he was like, Oh, he's like, Can I can I try can I try a cigar? Or can I try try that cigar? And I first thought he said, Can I try a cigar? I was like, Yeah, I'll give you one. He's like, No, can I try that one? I said Hell no. <laughs> to the no 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 to the no. I'm Hell like, no. I'm like, no, you you can't. He goes, What do you why not? I said, listen, it's not weed, man. I, I, we don't share cigars. It's like an unwritten rule. You yeah. Know? So I said, but if you want, I'll give you one. I had plenty with me. He goes, no, no, no. I said, no, listen, if you, I'll, I have plenty. I have hundreds. Like, if you, no problem. I'll give you a cigar. He goes, 10 bucks. I said, no, I, I'll give you it to you for free. I don't want any money for it. I have plenty of these. 15 bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks? I said, I'm like, no, I, I'll give it to you for free. He goes, 25. I said, I'm not quite sure what's going on right now. And Ed, my buddy Eddie is standing there. He's freaking dying because he's like, what the hell is happening? And he goes, all right, 30 bucks. I go, 40 bucks? He goes, 50 bucks. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I told this guy, I'm going to give you a cigar for free. And then he's like, now, I said, I, so I go, are you like going to pay me to not give you a cigar? He goes, I go, uh, okay. And he's like, all right, man. And he walks away. I'm like, what? <laughs> huh? This guy like you? Like, huh? hammered. Absolutely hammered. Okay? And he's like walking around with his buddy. Comes back. Spills my buddy's beer. And I go, you got to get him a beer. And he's like, oh, all right, man. <laughs> and walks up like, what the fuck is happening? This dude just off his fucking rock. What is going on? Dude, no clue. I have no clue. And then he was just like going around. So and- there's no conclusion. No. So then he, he, he just disappeared and he got a beer. Right, and I, he's right at the bar, and I can see him with my buddy's beer, and he stood at that bar for like thirty-five minutes with my buddy's beer in his hand. And then he came back, and I'm like, what "The fuck, dude? Where's my buddy's beer?" He's like, "Oh shit, oh my, be-. dude, absolutely off his fucking rocker, off his rocker." And then he was like, "Would hang with his buddies over here? He's hanging with his buddies over here. He's taking his shirt off, putting his shirt back on." I'm like, what is wrong with this dude? Dude, absolutely. Wanted me to pay, wanted to pay me to not give him a cigar. You should have took his money. Fuck him. What the fuck? Why not? I mean, like hundred dollars. The people in Vegas. Let me tell you. Do you know where he was from or anything like no, that? No, cool. Dave. We were calling him Drunk Dave the whole time. Fucking Drunk Dave, man. And then so we go. We go to my buddy and I go back to sleep. Right. And the next morning, the guys that we were with said that they were playing craps, and Drunk Dave came over and was making a whole fucking scene at the craps table. Like falling, grabbing onto the table, hanging off of it. Come on, drunk Dave. Get like, it Come on, Dave. Fucking drunk Fucking Dave. Dave, man. Man, people are wild, man. Like people are just. How do you? How do you? Has happen? that ever happened to you? Has somebody ever come up to you and said, "Hey, can I try your cigar?" Yeah. Oh, and, I, and I go, "No." They're like, "Nah." I remember, I remember. What is it with people that don't smoke cigars that want to just try your cigar? Because they they're used to. <clears throat> they most likely have smoked weed before, and they probably just took a joint and passed it along. I have a story like that. I was at a wedding once by myself. I was outside smoking a cigar, and 
this like 18 year old kid just graduated high school. And he's like, Hey man, can I get a puff of that? And I'm like, no, like, no. And he's like, he's like, why not? And I, I kind of the same thing. I'm like, you know, you, you don't really share cigars. You don't really do that. And I was like, I got one if you want. And he's like, nah, man, I'm good though. And he's like, he's like, man, he's like, I want to be just like you in a suit, smoking a cigar. You're probably sure you're su- was this right? Was, Damn, son. Was this right after the um, when you had that steak dinner? No, no, no. Oh, no. that wasn't the one. Okay, no, no, no. He's no. at a different wedding. He's like, "Damn, man, I want to be like you. You look successful. What do you do? Are you successful?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Um, I guess. I guess I'm somewhat successful." And uh, he just For started, now. Go- yeah. And um, he started going on and on and on like this 18 year old kid, and I'm like. He's like, yeah, you know, I smoke weed a lot, you know, blah blah blah. blah. I'm like, All right, can yeah. I have some of your cigar? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, but that was that was that, that's the story that comes to mind. But what is it like, people? Like, I, okay, I can understand, right? If I know you, right? One, I'm still not gonna let, like if you came if we were hanging out and I had a cigar and like we're if friends. I ask, if I ever asked you to sh- let me get a puff of your cigar, just shoot me right. Yeah, then just let me put a bullet in my head. But no, like let's say, okay, let's say you're hanging out with one of your friends. All right. Or like your brother that doesn't smoke cigars, and he just comes up and asks you like, "Hey, do you mind if I have a puff of that?" I get why he's asking because like he's your brother, he's a very yeah. good friend. He doesn't he doesn't understand. But what's the point? I'm still not going to let him do it. I'm like, listen, no, it's just an unwritten rule. Like I'll give you a cigar <laughs> and a palm. But for a stranger to come up and and ask, it makes it even worse. Especially with all the nonsense that's going on. So I'm like, dude, really? You do you honestly think that I met you 15 seconds ago? I'm going to let you puff on my cigar. Yeah, people don't give a fuck. Nah. Nah, fam. <laughs> nah, fam. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. Pass with that. Miss me with that bullshit. But, no, dude. I mean, people don't give a shit. There's, I came to the conclusion the other day. Well, not the other day, but. <laughs> that people don't give a shit. Well, besides that, yes. But there's more dumb people in the world, I think, than smart people. Yeah, we should put them all like on a fucking island, just you let know, natural selection. Take it's like that core. question, like recently, has been popping up everywhere. Is there more doors or tires in the world? Yeah, what? That's bizarre, isn't it? It's actually a really pondering question. Are there more doors than tires? I think there's more tires, but well, here's a question. Here's a question. I'm gonna. Well, do you count the doors that are on the car as doors? Yeah, it's a door. Okay. But but it's like you know like does a matchbox matchbox car count as four tires and four doors? Yeah, I don't know. The like, tires that are on the bottom of the ocean floor do they count? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a great question. If I had that's t- like this thing. You see this thing now that's going out with this fucking self tanning nasal spray? Did you no. see this shit? No, dude. Okay, I gotta. All right, I gotta say something about this, dude. Right? I gotta say something. So I saw in the news this morning. Apparently. There's a TikTok trend that people are taking. There's a company that sells a nasal spray that you spray up your nose and inhale that can give you a tan. What do you mean it give, can give you a tan? It says, its claim is, spray this chemical up your nose and you will get a tan. Like your skin just turns brown? Yeah, like a tan. So people on TikTok are taking this fucking bottle that doesn't have the ingredient, nothing, just, I'm going to get tan in a couple of days. Why? Why? How dumb do you have to be to think that you're going to snort this random chemical out of a random bottle from some comp- random company and your skin is just going to get darker? You just answered my own question. There, there's more dumb people than smart people, man. What? First of all, why are you taking an unknown chemical in your bloodstream, first and foremost? Second of all, it, does it say your whole body, your arms, your chest? No, it says it'll change like the pigment. Like in Michael your Jackson skin. style? Like, goes like from, you will get darker. Like Michael says. Jackson. And apparently you know. the chemical in there is like uh, uh, mel- mel- some- mel- melatonin. Melatonin? Is that no, I think melatonin. It's melatonin. something. It sounds sounds like melatonin. And I originally thought that wasn't that like the sleeping stuff. Yeah, melatonin. I think it helps you go to sleep. But there's another one, and apparently that was shown to help change your pigment in your skin. But it's not approved by the regulated by the FDA. It's not approved by the FDA. Whatever it was, and they put it in this bottle, and it doesn't even tell you all the other ingredients. And people, they, they had this sh- thing on it. So like, you're gonna you're gonna snort this shit. And it's gonna. You think you magically just gonna get darker skin? Hey, look at me! I'm tan. 
Yeah. So come on, anyway. son. Come on, son. Dude, people are just fucking. That goes. Would do you agree? Would you agree? Do you think there's more dumb people? Now, I guess the subjective question is what's considered dumb, but because you know I can be dumb in situations, you can be dumb in situations. Yeah, it depends on what, what room you're in. You put me in a room with like Elon Musk and you know and Jeff and, Bezos, you know Albert Einstein. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a moron. Okay, but yeah, but what, you put me in with a bunch of like third graders. I'm probably I'm just I'm a genius. Uh, so depends on what room you're in. Yeah, I guess I guess you have to break down what dumb actually calculates. That kind of goes in if you're in if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You true about that. Yeah. So true, true. Anyway, I wanted to uh, show you this hilarious edit that I did for one. All right, show it. Hit me with it. So this episode already came out, but Justin hasn't seen it yet. PK. Okay. So this is when we talked about the National Academy. Oh, I can't remember what you <laughs> academies. Academy. <laughs> no, just watch this shit. This shit's too funny. Today's episode of the Burnout Podcast, the National Academy, Bruh. Academies? Bruh. Academia nuts? It literally says Academies. Bruh. Academies. No! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The National Academies. <laughs> no, my reaction at the end of it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh. Oh. Like. <laughs> oh, gosh. I always assume he was going to say National Academic Society of... What did you call it? National what? National Academies. Academies? That's like a fucking... Diploma. 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 Cigars. Oh, yeah. Diplomat. Diploma. 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 You mean diploma? <laughs> wow. I know. Well, now we're even, baby. Oh, God. Now we funny. are even. That is too funny. Holy wow. shit. And you were like, academies. It's so funny. Both. Diplo- yeah, we're like all in on it. Like committed. Right? That's like the funny thing about like reading out loud sometimes is like, you know, you're reading fast. Sometimes like, you're supposed to read slower, but like you're like academies. Uh, academies? Academia nuts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I'm like, I, I literally Dibble- go, yeah, I go, thought, Dibble- or like the one when you thought, I think you thought it was, uh, uh, Spanish. Like there was a couple of words in there that were Spanish and you thought that that one, and you tried to read it as, as if it was oh, Spanish. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that happens one? all the time. Oh, yeah. It's like, well, they'll put them next to each other. <laughs> I'm like, they're all, they're all, uh, all Spanish words and they put one English word right after it. So I'm like, you know, oh, gosh. you try to pronounce it that how it sounds, but. Anyways, anyways, I'm trying to think of what what else happened in Vegas. No, we golfed. We golfed one day. You had you said you had a couple stories. <sighs> yeah, I lost my fucking cutter and lighter on the golf course. You lost so, or you forgot? No, I forgot. So I had I went golf and I brought I brought a bunch and it wasn't like my dapper cigar lighter, so I wasn't pissed. Um, but I had the Zycar cutter and the Zycar lighter, like the black and black one. Remember the Zycar lighter? You could, like it was the pinch like this. Oh. Oh, um, there's like, a single flame that was like a SD pitch. Dupont one. It looks like the SD Dupont. Oh, yeah, maybe that was maybe that was the one. It's the pure carbon though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the pure carbon one. Fuck, it was yeah. the pure carbon one. Damn, son. Um, pure carbon. If you're listening, you have to send me another one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I brought it with me and I put it like I put it in the cart so that if I have to le- relight it, I don't got to go back in my bag to get it. I can and I forgot because they're black and I couldn't see them. And it happens all the time. So I went back when I got back to the hotel. I went to put my cigars. I'm like motherfucker. Lost a dang. But, I actually I actually forgot and lost my SD DuPont lighter at a wedding. Uh, Dumbass. How the fuck do I do that? And that's the one. Just forget it. I mean. And then you really do. Because like you're, you know, you're doing a million different things. But like that, from that day on, I was like, all right. When I go out, I'm not bringing like any handy, dandy, fancy shit. Like just bring like the regular shit. No reason to bring a $300 lighter out to a wedding. Stupid. And my buddy actually bought it for me. So I actually felt bad because... I was like, sorry, you're dude. You're like, motherfucker. I'm like, sorry, dude. I just lost your $300 lighter you got me. He's like, well, you're an asshole. I'm like, you're an asshole. Sorry. So, oh, so here's a, this was a, uh, I don't know about funny story, but it's another story. So, um, dude, is this, this is like, a little, this is sick of some tough, <laughs> a little tough. I'm just sitting in here marinating. Oh my God. It's like, I don't think it's enjoyable. Um, oh God. So, so big craps players, right? 
all of us are craps, craps players. Okay? Craps. And <clears throat> for the quick thing about craps is there's two parts to the game, right? There's the first part and there's the second part. There's a come out roll and then the second part of the, the what a point's established. Should so, I keep it going? Do it. So anyway, <clears throat> okay. you can either play with the person who's rolling the dice or, or you can play against them, right? It's Every bet has an opposite. Bet. I always wanted to play craps because it looks like such a adrenaline pumping it game. It is. So if you're now most of the time, like we would play with the shooter, okay? Which means you know if you roll, you're betting on him. You're betting on the shooter. You're betting him to roll a, b- a bunch of numbers, and you can win a lot of money. But you can bet against the shooter, which is kind of like betting with the house. Um, so what happens is you roll the dice. Okay, if a seven or eleven comes out, the shooter wins. If a two, three, or twelve comes out, the shooter loses. Everything else in between doesn't matter? Um, everything else in between doesn't matter. Okay. Now, if you're betting with the shooter, 7 11 is good. If you're betting against the shooter, the 2, 3, and 12 are good. Or 2 and 3 are good. The 12 yeah. is a push. So, anyway, if anything else comes out, say a 6, they'll take this, what they call the puck, they'll flip it to on, they mark the 6, the number 6. Now, the shooter has to try to hit the 6 before a 7. If they hit the 6, great, they win. If they hit a 7, they lose. Mm. So, if you're betting against them, you want the 7 to come out, right? Now, there's more ways to make a seven on the dice than there is anything else, which is why the seven is a bad number. House wins. So anyway, I usually play like if I'm rolling, I like to try to make big rolls. I play with my, I, I roll with, I bet with myself to roll. So I'm betting all the numbers. And if you keep rolling, you keep making a lot of money. Um, but if you crap out, on to the next. So my buddies, they like to play the don't. It's called playing the don'ts. So you play the opposite side of the dice. So they try to, they're just like go in there, kind of sneak, put it in there, hope the person loses, and then you win money, right? What's usually the the ratio there? Do you usually win more money when you bet against that with the house or against the guy? To be quite honest, it it all comes down to the dice. Like however the dice are rolling, right? Like yeah, you, but I'm saying in your experience, how well have you won more with going with the guy or going with the house? Well, I've played more going with the guy uh, okay. than I have going with the dots. I usually didn't play with the against the guy, but I did this time, which is leading to the story. Um, I'd play. It's probably fifty fifty. I mean, usually. Like the house always wins, I always say, so you probably have a little bit more playing against the shooter, but it's not as fun. Um, yeah, right, because like you can't be like, yeah, fuck yeah, you yeah, lost. Well, because, yeah, because exactly what happens is like the more to- like the more that if you're betting against the shooter, the more shooters that are losing, the the more money well, that you're, you're made, making. Yeah, but the table is like really silent. It's not a wild table. Like nobody's gonna be like, let's fucking go, right? But if you're with the shooter and they keep hitting points, they like, hitting hard ways, all this stuff, you're like, let's fuck it. You're going nuts. So if you want to play Rush Hour too. So anyway, so my buddies play against the don'ts. So like they call it cooling off a table. So like they'll go to a hot table and they're like, all right, we're gonna play the fucking don'ts and just cool this table off. <laughs> right? They're like the dark side, yeah. right? They play the dark side. So like Justin, come over to the dark side. Let's play with us. I'm like, all right, so there's a group of us, right? It's like five, four, four, four or five of us that are we all find this one side of the table and this and we're playing the don'ts. And the other side of the table is playing all like the pass line, which is all with the shooter. So it's like that side versus our side, right? And what happens is when people see that you're playing against the shooter, they don't fucking like it. They like don't like you. Yeah, of Instantly course. Instantly don't like you. You're going against me. Fuck so, you. So we're all betting on the don'ts. And this one guy came in, saw we're all, he left, went to the other side of the table. He's like, I don't want to sit next to these guys. So now we're all, and we don't say shit. Okay? We are not, so we just place our bets because it's not like I'm taking your money. Right, I, we're taking the house's money, right? So if you wait, lose, wait, how are you not taking his money if he loses? Because we're it's the house pays me, like he's not paying me, the house is paying. But he loses his money though, we're putting it in. Okay, right? but he doesn't have to. But he can bet again. He can bet yeah, against no, I, no, no, no. You know I, what I'm I, saying? I, yeah, it's just whatever you're betting. I'm just betting a different. You're side not taking of the dice. his money directly. I'm not taking his money directly, and, be, and he has the choice to play a different way. If he can yeah. play however he wants, yeah. so they just get pissed because they think it's like bad juju, right? So. That juju. So anyway, the whole so our whole side of the table is on the dark side, right? And we we don't say shit. We're just like quiet. Just put your money down and let the dice roll, right? So all of a sudden, and they they start shooting, right? And they crap. They it's called crapping out. So they crap out. And we win. Take our money. Put it back in the thing, right? Next shooter comes down. Put our money in the thing. They shoot. They crap out. We win. So now we're winning money. We put it. In the, now they start picking up. They're like, wait, we're crapping out and they're winning money. What the fuck? So now they get pissed. Like, oh, you guys, oh, you want to bet against me? Okay, bet against me. See what happened. That's now, what they're saying? That's yeah, what saying? so now they start talking shit, and they're like getting a, a rally together. Like, all of them like, come on, we got to fucking, we got to beat these motherfuckers. We got to, come on, bet against me, bet against and they're, and they're looking at us, like, <laughs> talking shit, right? Like, looking right at me, saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm like, 
okay. And none of us are saying anything. We're just sitting there, right? So they go, yeah, yeah, but you want to bet against me? So they start shooting, and every single time, right, they go, watch this, watch this. I'm about to hit this. I'm about to hit this. Bang, seven out. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for the money. Put it on pocket. And they're getting fucking pissed. They're just pulling out money, pulling out money, <laughs> chasing. Just, we got to beat these. And we're just racking up the money, racking up the money. And they hit a couple of things here and there that they were winning. But, like, it was, it just turned into a complete, like, the dark side versus, like, the good side. And they're getting pissed. And by the end of it, they went from, like, super excited to just dead silent. Dead silent. So, we call her up. We walk out. And we all won money. So, we walk out. We say, tip the dealers. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, guys. Good luck. And then walk away. <laughs> they were fucking. Man, fuck you. They were fucking pissed. Dude, they were pissed. Pissed. But that's, I feel like that's what you got to bet on. You got to bet on the emotion. Like, like that, I feel like if you're, those are the people you want to find if you're betting against them. You want to find the people that like take it personal and like keep going and going and going and going. Yeah. Cause like chances are probably that they're going to crap out, like you said. And like, and what's cool, what's cool about it is that we weren't, I wasn't a hundred percent betting against them, right? So I would put the money down and then let's say they would get, they would make, let's say they hit the five. Okay. So now they have to try to hit the five again before they hit a seven. I would bet on the six and the eight because it's the second likely number to come out. Seven is the most popular. Six and eights are obviously all the way at the ends. The two and the 12 are the least likely. There's only one way to do it. So I would bet on the six and eight. So in the middle of the roll, if they were hitting six and eights, I was making money. So I was rooting for them to like hit the six and eights. Let me make some of my money back and then I'll pull the money down and now I want you to seven out, right? So in the middle of it, they're like yelling at us, oh, you're betting against me. I said, like, actually, I'm kind of betting with you. I'm betting against you, but I'm also betting with you. Like, we want you to hit a bunch. If you have money on the point, hit a bunch of them. Go ahead. But just don't hit the one, that one. Yeah. Hit all the other ones. I don't care. Hit the fucking hard ways. Hit it. Go nuts. But I want you to seven out the end. So, like, we're, I'm (laughs) betting a little bit. So, like, perfect world, you know, the five would come out. I would bet the six and the eight. Let's say they hit, like, six and the eight three times. Great. I made my initial investment back. I pull it. Now I got free money out there. And then they hit the seven. Bang. I win again. But they're like freaking out. And I go, I'm kind of betting with you, but I'm also against It's an ego. It's an ego. So, and they just got so, they took it so personal, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, you want to find the people like that, that get, I mean, because I guess no matter what you, when you play craps, people are always going to bet against you, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe, I guess maybe he wanted to hype the table up. So he was like, yeah, you want to bet. Knows, but yeah. You want to get all against but No, me? but they were like calling us out. Like, yeah, bet against me. See what happens. See what happens. We're about to fucking and you're crush like, you. <laughs> here you go i'm like okay and then i'd still bet against him he would crap out and then he'd be like ah, ah. i go thank Fuck you these motherfuckers man that's but wild it was uh it just felt like you felt like you're the dark side <laughs> like you and we didn't say anything it's not like we started it you yeah. just just where you put your money they see it like <laughs> they take it so pissed. personal <laughs> well, and the dealer was that like the dealer was with us she was like oh i don't care she's like you guys are smart and you're winning money she's like you play how like the table yeah. goes does it does the feng shui of the table matter about going with the guy i guess so right like you said if the feng shui is going towards the the betters yeah the the, the players stance you want to go with him but if it's kind of or does it like i don't know is it it's, like dude it's all random it's yeah fucking, it's like a, it's it's it's, it's, it's all the ra- dice it's a fucking random die if the like everybody everybody has all these strategies on which way you want to do it right but our strategy if he's rolling if he's a hot shooter we're gonna get destroyed we're going to absolutely get destroyed. But if he's an ice cold shooter, if that whole table is ice cold, we're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. So if you're, but if you're on the other side of the dice, you're playing with the shooter. If but he's me, hot, you're going to make a lot of money. Like to me, like, so I, the reason why I don't bet, it's just because it's like, I just think of the opposite of everything. Like if this guy is hot and I come on, like the chances are like, I'm probably, I'm going to think like he's going to lose everything and it's going to be cold. Like I hate bet. I, I just don't bet. I well, just, you can bet like that. Like I guess one of our buddies wasn't betting either way. He was just putting money in the field, which is basically it's an even money bet that covers like a selection of numbers. Any one of those numbers hits, it wins even money. Um, so he would just come in. He would put his money on the field. He's like, I don't give a shit. It hit any one of those. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. And it would hit. And it covers everything. It covers like a two, three, four, the um, two, three, four, the nine, the ten, the eleven, the twelve. So it covers all these numbers. So he's like, hit any one of them. I win. I win money. Yeah, I don't have attitude for gambling because I always think it's oh, everything's always against me. So if like I go on the the hot streak with the guy, I'm like, well, probably it's gonna hit a cold streak or vice versa. Oh, this guy's really cold. I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna bet against him. He's probably gonna get really hot. That's why I don't gamble. Oh, I don't dude. have the I don't have the, the gambling confidence. Dude, we have. So do you have? You ever play blackjack? 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we played blackjack, right? And I and my buddy was like, "Dude, you should play blackjack." I'm like, "Cause I, I would play, but like everyone, I, I just didn't. I like playing pie gal, whatever." And I, he goes, "Dude, I don't understand. You should play. You should play blackjack." He goes, "You have a good brain for number. You have a numbers brain, and you it's easy to count cards." He's like, "You should play." I'm like, "All right, we'll play." It turns out it is rather easy um, to count cards. We made a little bit of money on it. But we sit down at this table, right? So my buddy's like, all right, we're going to sit down. Brand new shoe. Because you don't really go in the middle of a, a yeah, shoe. Yeah, fuck people shut up. Right? So you go brand new shoe. So we waited. Brand new shoe comes out. Brand okay. new shoe means dealer? Uh, brand brand new. No, what happens is they have like six decks. And they shuffle all the decks and they put it in the shoe. And oh. they pull one card at a time. When the shoe is empty, they reshuffle all the decks and they start fresh. So now if they put six decks in the shoe, is it one through 52? One through 52? No, it's all shuffled together. Or it could be like... Uh, ace of spade, ace of spade, yeah, ace of spade. Yep. yep. So okay. it's all shuffled it's together. Six decks mixed all together. It's all shuffled together. Yeah. Uh, so that's um, hard to count. <clears throat> well, yeah, you count plus one, minus one, and, and zeros, right? So don't even try. It's yeah, it's super. Low cards are plus one. High cards are minus one. Everything in between is zero. If you got a really high number, like plus fifteen, it means a lot of low cards came out. So there's high cards in the deck, and vice versa. High cards are good for you. Maybe you get a lot of blackjacks. So anyway. Uh, so we sit down, my buddy. Whenever I go gambling and I'm with you, I'm just going to – you're going to put me under your wing and you're going to tell me what to do. Eric, do this. I'll be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. So we sit down with this table and there's a there's like uh, uh, somebody sitting left. They're not there. They're, their chips are there and they have a reserved seat. And there's somebody sitting over here, old, uh, older guy. And so my buddy and I sit in the middle. And it's a brand new shoe. I said, hey, can we sit with you guys? Sure, no problem. So we sit down. So they start – they shuffle the shoe and they're ready to deal. Okay. And they said, who would like to uh, cut? They give you a cut card, and you have to cut it, which means cut the deck. Yeah, yeah. And the guy was like, oh, we're not, we're not, we have to wait for my buddy. You said we'd wait for him. Who said we'd wait for him? Right. The well, dealer? So before we sat down, they're like, well, we'll wait for him to get back because it's just you two. Yeah. But we sat down, so now the pit boss is like, hey, they would like to play, so we can't wait anymore. You have to shuffle the cards. And the guy had the cut card in his hand. He's like, no, I'm not going to cut until my buddy comes back. Jeez. And we're like, dude, real fucking Karen of a guy, okay? He's like, no, we're not going to uh, – sorry for all the Karens out there. No, he's he, – we're not going to play. We're waiting for my buddy to come back. And I'm like – I mean, my buddy and I are sitting here like right off the bat. This is bad juju. Like, I want to fucking play with yeah. this asshole, right? And the pit boss is like, sir, you have to – he's like, fine, you cut the cards. And the pit boss is like, I don't give a shit. I'll cut the cards. <laughs> and he's like, well, you have to offer it. And they, and they said – they offered it to us. We're like, I don't care. Like. Let the dealer, so dealer cut it, bang, cut the cards, no problem, started dealing. And as soon as they started dealing, the guy came back, so it really wasn't even a fucking problem. Well, we have this guy over here. As soon as we sat down, no, I'm not going to cut the cards. We have to wait. No, we're not playing. We're not. I go, who the fuck are you, dude? Shut up. Just play. Okay. Idiot. And then we wound up winning like a little bit. And as soon as we got up, we like went up like 150, 150, 200 bucks, left. My buddy's like, I wanted to get off that table as quick as I fucking, as soon as I was up like 100 bucks, I'm leaving. Yeah. Because we were playing fifty dollar hands, so it's like you win two hands out. Yeah, I'm like, we got up. He was up two hundred. I was up like one seventy five. Out. I'm like done. Let's but, go. But I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are? And it's not like he was playing. Like, okay, if you like, you can sit down and reserve a table, so you can come down with like twenty grand back. I want to reserve the whole table. I'm betting thousand dollars a hand, and they reserved a the table for you. The dude was betting fifty bucks like us. Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck are you? You got like a thousand bucks right there. You like, were nobody, son. Anyway, it's fucking shit, dude. But you want to talk about the people that like roam that town? Characters, bruh, hookers. A lot of hookers. A out lot there. of fucking hookers, man. Not hookers, or I guess you could say hookers. You haven't been. You haven't been to Vegas, have you? I have not. Bro, have not been fucking, to Vegas, dude. The people watching is so much fun. I'm sure it is. I love people watching. Bro, you would love it. I would love. I would love to just get a nice pair of sunglasses and just sit on a bench somewhere and just watch. Watch what goes dude, by. Dude, just sit and do you- And just start fascinating about everyone's story, where they come from, what they're doing here. It was wild, dude. Wild like, people. That's what I like about traveling. Like, when you travel, it's like, everyone has a story, everyone has a different background, and you're like, what is this person doing here in this moment in time? Like, I'm here, and they're here. We're both here for at uh, the same time, and like, a lot of things are going on in each other's lives, and we're here. Like, it's just weird. Like, Dom. Like, Dominic from Aruba. Right? Yeah. Like, he has his own life, I have my own yeah, life, we ended up yeah, being yeah, friends, yeah. and I'm on the podcast. But and I actually just told him that I'm trying to come to Chicago this summer, and I was like, "Give us the fucking deets." There you go, the deets. So you would love it then, because you just sit like at that chandelier bar. I had the cigar, just sat. I'm just looking around, just people watching. I would love it. I have and a we, were, we were playing a game. Uh, we were playing a game called um, 
hooker or not. Oh, okay. So we were like, anybody that was walking in, we're like, is that a hooker? Nah, I'm not a hooker. Is that a hooker? Yeah. What are some of the characteristics of a hooker? So like, first off, the key is like, it's not always about the attire. The attire can, you can, right? You yeah. got these like 40 inch heels with this just skimpy dress where you're hoo-ha hanging out. Yeah. Okay, right? But the key is they go to the bar, right? And they sit by themselves. They don't order a drink. They sit there and they wait. They wait for some some somebody else to come up. Hey, would you like a drink? Oh yeah, I would like a drink. Would you like a dance? Would you hey. like. But the, we were watching, and you look at like you see when they come in. And we're like, where is she going? Where is she? And some of them they beeline it for like the old rich guys sitting in a the corner. They beeline it, and I'm like, okay, I'm like this young right, like pretty young thing, you know, mid twenties with a skimpy dress, beelining it right to this like sixty year old guy who's got a Rolex on his wrist. I'm like. Hooker. 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 <laughs> like, come on. Really? Uh, I'm all really? ma'am. So we're just sitting there watching. I'm like, there's some That's char- a fun game. There's some characters, man. There's some, And then there's like a group of girls that have like the tight dresses, right? But they're all with their girls are hanging out, order drinks, whatever. I'm like, fine. Right. But then there's the ones that are like, obviously. Solo dolos. Obviously trying to make some money. You know, speaking of Vegas, it reminds me of a future guest on a future episode. Mm. Do you know what I'm thinking of? I do know what you're thinking of. We have a guest coming on the podcast soon who reminds me of Vegas because this person was, and well, not is anymore, but was an ex-mafia member. He was. Big fan of the podcast. Big fan of the podcast. Great guy. Great guy. Talked to him for about 45 minutes on the yeah, phone. I didn't okay. talk to him yet. So, really nice guy. But yes, he was in the, he was in the mafia back in there. Late eighties, early nineties. His father was a was a big timer in the in the mafia at one point, but big cigar guy. Big cigar and he's gonna tell us all the stories. He told us yeah. that it really ain't thing nothing off limits. Yeah, I mean he's he's a very laid back and, and cool guy. Um and you know, some of the things you're saying was like some of the things he was saying was like, Yo, I love you guys, you guys make me laugh, you guys teach me a lot about cigars. And he's actually very very, very um uh, positive yeah person. If you ever watch it, look at his comments. He's always commented like "much love, love you guys," po- like all the emojis. I think I think in his profile, his thing is the happy gangster. But he's always yeah. He, I get that very happy. He's always smiling. He is very happy yeah. and very and he's very positive. Um, and there's a whole reason for that and everything like that. But um, it's gonna be a good show. But it's funny how we came across him because he always stood out on the on our he always coming on our videos and he always put all these comments and I'm like who is this guy? So the first go around, I just looked at him. And I just saw, you know, a, a dark tan Italian guy with cigar. So I was like, oh, it's an Italian guy down in Florida who likes cigars. Okay. But then he kept commenting and commenting. I was like, and then like, you know, you get in a black hole on Instagram and you just happen to look. And I look and I was like, oh, shit. And I was And his, his profile said, you know, hashtag. That's shit. <laughs> Bro. Shit is hellish. Like, it's just, I think it's just maybe, I don't know. Did it go up in proof or something? Because No, I don't know. Maybe it's just not like, not vibing with me right now, but. It's tough. I don't know. It's tough. Maybe it's stanky. I don't know. Uh, we'll get a new bottle. We'll get some like Eagle Rare or something. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the last thing I'll say was when I came across his profile and I realized you know who he was and what he or he was. He had affiliations with the mafia. His profile said hashtag um, Families of the Mafia season two on MTV, and I was like, oh shit! I was like, this guy's a ex mafia guy. This guy's in a mob, and I was like, holy shit! So really, like a really nice guy. And, uh, you know, I obviously told him I have a huge, you know, uh, interest in that whole lifestyle and that tradition, like how it took over the world at one point, And it was so, like, prestigious to be in. And uh, he's happy to come on. He's excited. So, And he told t- us pretty much everything is. Well, and I asked him, I said, hey, listen, you know, out of respect to you, I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't record live. But I don't want to bring up anything that you don't want to talk about. And he was like, listen, no, um, I'm pretty much okay with talking about anything besides like, you know, like the obvious is like, don't ask me if I ever killed anybody yeah. or like murder or anything like that. So uh, I'm like, okay, well, that's obvious. Well, yeah, obviously. So, yeah. But uh, no, we're excited to have him on. So it should be uh, next week's episode, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, is yeah. it? No, not, not next week's. We're filming next week. 
well, this episode is going to be coming out in a few weeks. So by the time this episode comes That's, out, you are right, sir. <laughs> you are right, sir. Yeah. I, I lose track of how many freaking episodes we got. So many. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I'm super excited. It's going to be a good conversation. So stay tuned for that episode. Just wanted to just wanted to give you guys a little bit teaser. People watching and listening to keep on the lookout for that episode. So it should be good. Um, I guess we got to cheers and a send off with this. We do with this tough whiskey. Why don't you send so them out? Where, I'll send them out. Why don't, why don't you give them the website? Why don't you give them all the instructions on no, what you to know? Do. I got that flow. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Let's hear it. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button and please hit that bell to be notified for every single time we drop a new video. If you're listening, if you're an oil file, please hit the five star, five thumbs up, highest rating you can. Subscribe to it. Follow us, share it with your friends, leave a comment, drop a review. You know the deal. Please. Check out our, our website, burnonpodcast.com. Become a member, $5 a month. You get exclusive access to partnering stores. We have Nova Cigars, which we're smoking right now. Bang. Revive Vinyl, Kansas Clean Still Whiskey, Cigarandpipes.com, and the Unicorn Hunters Club, which is a cigar subscription service. Plus, you also get into a monthly members-only giveaway. We give away cigars, spirits, accessories, and more. Burnonpodcast.com. Check it out. Eric. All I got to say is cheers, chin chin, salute. Bang. I didn't even sip that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like.